Sounds good? Yeah. Haircut. Your vacation. He's a fine gun. Plant well, charges here, here. Subject to Bedford's advice and how well it goes for you in London. With or without official approval, we go ahead. Of course. The blind eye, Colonel. Nelson Spirit. May not be quite dead in Britain. Look, it is. It's a peregrine. It's a peregrine falcon. Quilla. Hmm? I should have known. What? You, on a bird-watching holiday. It was a few days' break. It was. I have to get back to London now. You should have waited at the hotel, waited for me. No. You would have had a holiday anyway. No. Why not? One day, you won't come back at all. My dear Jack, this is a very great pleasure. And for me, sir. Uh, sir? Oh, the knighthood. <laughs> Congratulations. <laughs> oh, thank you. Well, it's been a long time. How are you? And have you done any shooting lately? You must come up to Avid again for the grass very soon. Yes, I'd like that. Well, this is very unexpected. I thought it best not to advertise my presence. Oh? Oil. North Sea oil? No. Oil now. You're tipped presently as the next foreign secretary. Newspapers. Come into the house. I know you're not an over-ambitious man, Ian. But you are a patriot. Now, how would you like to deliver to Her Majesty's government a friendly, a very friendly, oil-producing country which owes us a huge debt of gratitude? How? The present rule is a fanatic. How? With just 25 men. Men who would spark a revolution which would restore to power the previous ruler. No, 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 it's impossible. All I'm asking is that a blind eye be turned. Impossible. Patriotism, Ian. You mustn't tell me. Don't put me in this position. All I hoped. Nothing. For your own sake at your age, dear heaven. Please, please, put it out of your mind. Forget whatever your scheme was. What can I do for you? I hope it's more a matter of what we can do for you, sir. For me? Yes. My visit is not unconnected with the gentleman who has just left you. There's nothing private from you people. That man is my friend. Was your friend, sir. It's many years since you were closely in touch. You've grown apart. Your careers have made you into very different people. And I would say, indeed I would hope, that you can have very little in common nowadays. He's still my friend. The man you knew, sir, Colonel Carson. Crazy Colonel Carson, as the gossip columns would have it after that uh, VC, was one of the last of the great heroes. A loner in the tradition of Livingston, and even General Gordon. I don't accept. But it's not a hero's world now, is it? 
And perhaps that explains why such a man today comes to be recruiting hired killers for a living. Mercenaries. Then I... Mercenaries, killers, for just about every nasty little private war going. I understand what you're trying to do, but you're wasting your time. I hope you're right, sir. But I do know that he's got himself involved in something that can only end badly. And badly for everyone. It is my belief that he came to you for assistance, which, of course, you refused. Of course. However, you do have information now, sir, which I am instructed by my masters to obtain from you. We must know names, dates, and, most importantly, his objective. I said you're wasting your time because I refuse to let him tell me. Then, with the very greatest respect, sir, that was extremely foolish of you. Yes. Now you'll set your dogs on him, will you? Hardly dogs, sir. Much more serious than that. Yes, but what you don't know is that Carson has paid cash. We have it from contacts that he's ordered a sizable consignment of arms. And now it seems he's recruiting men, professionals, French mostly, ex paras and mercenaries, to do a one-off job. What job? Someone with big money? Quite. One last picture. That man is Derek Bedford. And who is he? You will be Mr. Bedford. The real Bedford is quite a rogue, by all accounts, an ex-Congo mercenary, but most importantly, an expert in Soviet ground-to-air anti-aircraft missiles. It doesn't need an expert. They're made to be used by idiots. He's also a demolition and explosives wizard. Carson's ordered missiles and explosives. That is his shopping list. Arms ordered from Omnipol in Yugoslavia and awaiting his collection at... Um... Port Plotse, if they're explosives. Is this hard intelligence? It's CIA. 200 9mm machine guns, rifles, pistols, ammunition, grenades, mines, rocket launchers, plus 100 kilos of explosives. Where does he think he's going with this lot? To start a war? Somewhere. He could start a world war, if it's the Middle East. Well, it's the Mediterranean, certainly. Intelligence narrows it down to five possible objectives, seven possible men behind them. As to which it is, unfortunately, his friend Sir Ian Dalrymple neglected to ask. Oh, Carson is very well connected. I doubt this lot's for a Buckingham Palace garden party. No, no, he's a patriot. Another of yon dangerous breed. Thinks they can save the world single-handed. No guesses where? From CIA or Egyptian intelligence? Nobody knows. They are waiting for you to find out. Hudson will be your field controller. They? What have you done? Taken small ads in the papers? Oh, we've got information from various sources. With obvious exceptions, everyone is cooperating. Poor Carson. Aye. He could get himself killed. The trouble with amateurs. They can get pros killed. I was writing you a note. Now you can tell me. Just thanks. And goodbye. <laughs> Had any breakfast? No tea. I drink coffee in the mornings. Well, now I'll know. No, Diane, no more premonitions of doom. It wasn't. Anyway, it's my decision, isn't it? What is? Whether you're worth what you cost. You cost an awful lot. As you say, it's your decision. Well. See you. You sure? Yes. Please. All right. See you soon. Sooner than you think.
you a missing connection. Dubrovnik won't run away. Over to you. The plane landed and he was on it. How long ago? One and a half hours. Oh, I wonder what's keeping him. Maybe he's just being careful. Well, let's not talk about it out here. sleep on an aeroplane and gets carried all the way to England. And no passport. I'm afraid that is serious. We shall have to take you into custody, Mr. Bedford, to ask a few questions. There, now. You're feeling better already. Get your hands up. Turn round slowly. Walk forward. You fool. You could have got yourself shot. No, you could have got yourself shot. Playing stupid game. If it hadn't been me, you could be dead. What's the matter with you? Gone sloppy? Good. Now, how did you get in? Bedford. Derek Bedford. Right, but how did you get in? Over the roof. You do love your cloak and dagger, don't you? Why don't you just ring the front doorbell? This is your safe house, Mr. Bedford. Safe house? That stuff. Whose is it? American. CIA? They supplied it, yes. We've got international cooperation on this one. London should have told you. Cooperation? It stinks. Are the Reds cooperating? Not directly. Anyway, Carson's an amateur. We're not treading on their toes. This is a hostile area. We've abducted an explosives expert, impersonated him, set up a field control. If they find us here, they won't care what we're doing. Yes, but they were and sure to... And relaxed. Hardly. In the field and sloppy as an old woman who's found the gin bottle. No need to be nervous, mate, with the modicum of our usual care. Huh? No. All right. Brief me. Tell me the master plan, controller. Reassure me. Then I'll give you half a dozen reasons why you should be as nervous as a kitten. Oh, calm off it. A foot in the kitchen, by the way. Help yourself. No. Well, item one. All you have to do, Mr. Bedford, is introduce yourself to Carson, get aboard the ship and find out where it's going after they pick up the arms of Blotsay. They'll rendezvous at sea with another ship carrying the men. You may find yourself at sea, yes. Contact, communications, what do I do? Write a note and stick it in a bottle. Item two, make yourself known to the ship's radio operator, Hans Brennan. He's ours, we bought him for rather a lot of money. And let's hope he stays bought. I don't trust bought help. What if he's Carson's man, or a double, or anything? You're looking for trouble, aren't you? He's German, he's a family man, he's hard up. We think you can trust him. Anyway, there's a backup. What? I wish you'd let me eat in peace. Now, what's this? A little technological miracle. Don't knock it. What's more, it's British. Hide it on board. High mast head, if possible. All you have to do is to tear that off, and it'll stick to anything. Well, don't do it yet. It'll stand out on a, any radar screen as a great big blip at over ten miles. What will they think of next? 
And any aircraft overflying the Med can trace exactly where Carson's going. So at the 11th hour, the US 6th Fleet comes steaming over the horizon and arrests Carson. Well, something like that, but that's not our concern. That's political. No, I'll be on board. I suppose. You know, there's something wrong. Feels wrong. Something London isn't telling us. I mean, if they're going to arrest Carson anyway, why wait? Well, he hasn't done anything wrong yet. This has been planned, you know, not just London. Maybe you're worrying too much. Maybe. This uh, equipment, who installed it? Some CIA electronics man. He came here. Hmm. International cooperation. International muck-up. The Russians know about the arms. They'll know someone's here. Who... who fixed this place? Local head and station, I think. You think? And who told the CIA? Well, I don't know. It was all fixed when I arrived. Well, I think some desk-bound idiot with his international cooperation has blown you. Wide open, Hudson. I knew I shouldn't have eaten that fry up. You better get out. What about you? You pulling out? They don't know I'm here. I came over the roof. And, uh... They should try to kill me? I'll know I'm right. Too late! Permission to come aboard. Operation blown. Repeat, blown. Stop. Real Bedford has admitted to being red agent. Stop. Yes, you may well look startled. Disengage agents Hudson and Quiller, urgentists, and at any cost, stop. Message ends. Next. To the Carson ship radio operator, Hans Brennmann, on 941. Send the message to Quiller, overboard. That's the signal to abort mission, in case he's already... <laughs> In case he's already gone aboard. Yes? Wait. Do you realise what you're asking, sir? Well, then you'll have to make that a direct order. May I ask why, sir? In your own good time. I see. Very well. Cancel those. I've just been ordered not to abort the mission under any circumstances. Ah. Sorry to keep you waiting, Mr. Bedford. Yes, sir. And I recognize you, of course. I'm afraid I don't know you, however. I had no idea it was you, Colonel. They simply said for me to accompany some arms and explosives and instruct in their use. They, being the Czechs or the Russians. Are we underway? You'll understand our doubts. The Czechs wished you on us, and we don't know you. However, now you've finally arrived, Yes, I've decided there's no point in hanging her around, and we're on our way to Plotse to pick up some arms. The Czechs wished me on you. As a condition of supplying arms. I'm a freelance weapons expert. Guided missiles are explosives. But I'm no red, Colonel, if that's what you're thinking. I'm British. It is real. You've only got to look at the photograph. Sir, there's an obvious explanation. The Czechs have gone out of their way to find someone who would be acceptable to you. It would make me happy if that were true. 
Now, Mr. Bedford, if you'd be so kind as to eat in your cabin, I'll have you called when we dock in Plotsy. My dear, I don't really know what you're up to now. <laughs> Whatever that might mean. Still at the ministry, Ag and Fish. I shouldn't have come. Now you have? Ag, Ag and Fish, do, do you know Kinlock? Angus Kinlock. Never meet him. Why? I saw you with him once. What about him? Oh, it's stupid of me. I shouldn't have come. Forgive me, my dear. For, forgive me for disturbing you at this hour. Now you have, Uncle Ian. You can't leave me in suspense. What about Angus Kinlock? It was indiscreet. Insecure. It could get us both into very serious trouble. Look, this is me. Tell me. I have a fair idea what you're up to. Little Diane. I had hoped. <laughs> That's a forlorn hope. I hoped you might... Well, I, I don't know. I, I hoped you might use your influence with Kinlock. Well, I, I have very little influence. But what about? No. No, Diane. It was stupid of me. Forgive me, you can't help. I could try. Zodiac. Move. Zodiac landing craft. What are those for? The colonel's waiting. And maybe you shouldn't be seen on deck. No bedroom. A scotch? I don't drink. Should I trust a man who doesn't drink? Should I trust a man who does? <laughs> You've been causing us some difficulties. Excuse me a moment. <laughs> difficulties? Have I? I'm sorry, sir. How? That's the first time I've ever seen anybody take a gun off him. What difficulties, sir? Our Iron Curtain friends, despite having recommended you, now seem to have taken rather a particular dislike to you. And? They want us to hand you over. Are you going to? They suggest you're not the real Derek Bedford. Oh. In fact, they've provided me a documentary proof. It's incontestable, isn't it? So, if you're not Derek Bedford, who are you? Hmm? Friend or foe? English, anyway, Colonel. Friend of a friend. Hmm. I knew it. I knew he wouldn't let me down. <laughs> of course, he can't do anything officially. Well, thank you. Oh, now, what are we going to tell those reds, huh? Gold is a powerful argument. What did your uncle want in confidence? He was never specific. It was late and he was under strain. But he did mention Colonel Carson. So? At last and reluctantly. For some reason, he's worried. Very worried. I think it's for Carson. I see. Well, thank you for reporting it, Miss Wellman. Because Quiller's present mission involves Carson, doesn't it? Does it? Carson was on the boat Quiller was watching. I see. Is Quiller all right? So far. When someone like Sir Ian Dalrymple gets involved, unless I'm being indiscreet... But you are, Miss Bowman, and I'm surprised at you. You're no raw recruit. You're a professional. And you should know better than to talk. Ever. To anyone. You have no need to know. Are you emotionally involved with Quiller? You know I've been working with him again. That is no answer. 
As you say, I'm a professional. It's as well not to play with those things, sir. It would be a temptation if I was a 17-year-old Palestinian gorilla. However, it wasn't loaded. From what I know of you, Colonel, your army career, and subsequently, this must be some sort of a private operation. As Dalrymple told you, no doubt. If it is, I'd like to be in on it. If it is, why? It's my line of country. I'll think about it. Let's see. What's the objective? Oh, well, that, Mr. Bedford, is the million dollar question. Two million dollars, in fact. <laughs> Pity we can't test fire those. Then. Without wrecking the barrel. Because you forbade me to warn them, Hudson is dead and Quiller is on that ship. I don't care how high the levels are. Until he talked, we'd no way of knowing that Bedford was... Warning Quiller would be quite simple, sir. The radio operator is in our pay. Do nothing. An order. I understand. Brenman. You know, the radio officer. How would you do? I, um... I thought you would have got in touch with me. In touch? Why? Oh, you know. I don't. Oh, <laughs> aren't you the one, hmm? Some people have mentioned me to you. I don't think they can have. Are you a married man, Mr. Brunner? Yes. Children? Two. Two boys. And you? I'm not married. All in good time, eh? Oh, yes. Yes, indeed. Lunch. No, sir, there's no doubt about it. Quiller has made the plant. The destination? No, sir, not yet. 
It's too early. Welcome aboard. Thank you for coming. Who's the Arab? L'Arab Guillatil. D Day is the day after tomorrow. L'Operation s'est fixée à demain jour. Captain Truscott will be in charge of the sleeping arrangements and the times for eating. Now, tomorrow morning. Counting heads. Man overboard scare. Perhaps it's the Arab. Arab? From the other boat. He nearly knocked me over in the passageway and then locked himself in cabin five. Who is he? Heaven help us, Brenman, and at some point I've got to take a chance on you. If you are caught in here, there will be trouble. You must identify yourself. You know who I am. Who's the Arab? He is all the time in his cabin. Is he Amin al Shazri? Who is that? Okay, I'll crystal gate. Send a message. What message? Message reads It's probably Objective Charlie tomorrow. Okay. And now you better get out of here. I'll stay and watch. You have not identified yourself, and there are certain codes. Oh. Yes. I was to send on a certain frequency, but only on the half hour. That's a lie, Brenman. It's a 24-hour listening post, and I know the frequency. All right, you're Carson's man or a double, I don't care. Either way, send that message now on 941. Oh, 941. Now I know who you are. I know you're... I'll blow your head off, Brenman, unless you send that message. Now. Right. You should have a gun, mister. But what is to stop me telling the colonel? You won't tell the colonel. You've sold him down the river. Mister! I was not just thinking of the colonel. No? Who? Are your troubles just begun, mister? The British paid me to send a message for them. But I was approached a second time. Somebody else paid me to send a message for them. For Bedford. Somebody else? 
You must have thought it was your birthday. Maybe the Russians. Now I know that you are the British spy. Yes. Chop the gun down. How do you explain murder to Colonel Carson? I shoot spies. You're supposed to be in charge of test firing the weapons. You get a stray bullet. Think he's going to believe two stray bullets? You'll never know. Truscott and Brenman, both holding guns which have been fired. They killed each other in the radio room. And why do you suppose they did that? I don't know. You kill them? No. Right. You're my second in command now. Have you heard the decision they've taken about Carson? I don't think I can discuss it with you, sir. Yes, you can. I was party to that decision. Were you indeed? Your friend? Party to it only. It was my decision. I was outvoted, and I don't think I've slept since. Have you not? They're letting him go to his death. A man like that. Letting him walk into a trap, a whole army against him. And let us not forget the men with your gallant colonel. One of them, your man. You must be going to pull him out somehow. Save him. Warn him. Warn Carson, too. I know what I'm asking, for you to exercise your own discretion. To disobey a very clear directive. And gain a very useful friend. Man, it's not as if it's even going to work. I said as much. My colleagues believe handing Carson and El Shazri over on a plate to be killed will show good faith. Convince the Arabs, make them grateful, further peace. I say it's like trying to pet a wolf. But then, as you so rightly pointed out, it is not our decision. Save Carson, you won't regret it. Is there any good reason why I shouldn't simply report this conversation? I'll deny it, of course. Then but... I can speak equally frankly, too. Do. Then, Sir Ian, I think you are contemptible. You want me to shoulder your responsibility. If you wanted to save your friend, you could do it in a dozen different ways. Inform the newspapers, resign, make the whole scheme impossible. No. Because you No. See... Because your ambition won't let you take the slightest risk. I can't warn my man. I've been expressly forbidden to do so. It seems that for anything as important as oil, even good men are expendable. And that's on your conscience, too. You remember how simple it all seemed. And there's a difference between good and evil, between them and us. Well, no, I don't know. Is the answer false? Yes. Sometimes you have to fight. Twenty-five men to fight a nation. Oh, we just spark the revolution. The people take it on. The patriots. If we succeed, we could help make Britain great again. Could just work, you know. And if it doesn't? Well, then, tomorrow... But a nice surprise. You've never taken me for lunch before. Well, while you're still on leave. Just give me two minutes. Help yourself to a drink. Hmm. Ah, I see you've got more than water. Especially for me. Of course. Well, Quilla likes it, too. Quilla? Are you... Fond of him? That's against the rules. I mean, fond of him. Why? Oh, just curious. What's happened? Happened? Don't lie to me. Why should you think... Don't lie. What's happened to him? I 
kaldır. Is he... Is he dead? Ask your uncle. You are on leave, Miss Bowman. Indefinite leave. Why? You've got yourself involved. The final objective is the overthrow of the present government and the restoration of the monarchy. La raison pour l'oppression et le renversement du régime à présent et la restauration du roi. We are the trigger. Nous sommes la détente. Now, briefly, we explode charges here and here in the walls of the jail, codename Ritz Hotel. On peut. Nous ferons détonner la plastique là et là au mur de prison. Ce prison, nous appelons l'hôtel Ritz. Fight our way inside. Release and arm the 200 political prisoners held there, mostly senior army and the police officers. Nous gagnerons à l'entrée par la bouche de fusil. À faire en libre d'armée les 200 prisonniers, qui sont la plupart officiers de l'armée et les flics. Mm -hmm. And get the blazes out of there, back to the beach and our boats. Enfin, nous démonterons en vif au bateau. Questions? Shared, sir. It's a docking job. Where's Bedford? Hello, Dex. Top side, port, starboard. probably saved your life. Is that all? Your ship's not worth tuppence to have been towed off to a dry dock somewhere. We'll drift. I've run out the whole anchor cable. Tons of cable on the seabed. It'll take you hours to get that lot weight again. You won't drift far. Kill him. Now you just wait. And it'd help if you threw the arms overboard. They'll be hard to explain. You're in territorial waters. Landing craft. We go ahead. There'll be an army waiting for you. That's the chance I take. I was guessing about the territorial waters. You won't get back to the ship. You'll be killed. Yes. Maybe I will. You want to come? Of course. <laughs> you see, even you think I'm going to succeed.
Our transport. That's where they'll be waiting. Are you Derek Bedford? Yes, I am. You are very lucky, Mr. Bedford. We couldn't guarantee you safety. You could have asked them to surrender. Don't spoil your luck. Have a bath. Wash some of the muck off. I don't know. Can you? 